Interested in getting a market beating yield and double digit dividend growth? Want to invest in a business that just keeps putting up excellent numbers? Looking to get a great deal on a high quality dividend growth stock after it's dropped by almost 40%? Then you have to check out today's video. He is a best-selling author. 30-year-old Jason Fieber has a plan. This guy retired at only 33 years old. I don't know if I know too many people that have accomplished something like that. He's really kind of a guru when it comes to passive income. Before I get into today's content, please give us a big thumbs up if you find value in our videos. It helps us to get the word out and grow the channel, and I'd really appreciate it. And make sure to stay tuned until the end of the video for a special news announcement. I want to tell you about a high quality stock that pays big, growing, reliable dividends. These growing dividends are funded by growing profit because this business is a global media and entertainment conglomerate. High speed internet connectivity, streaming television, films, theme parks, a major broadcast network, even a professional sports team. This business has just about everything you'd want in media and entertainment. And that's why it continues to grow its revenue, profit, and dividend like clockwork. I personally invested in stocks just like this one on my way to going from below broke at age 27 to financially free at 33. By the way, I explain exactly how I achieved financial freedom in just six years in my early retirement blueprint. If you're interested, you can download a free copy of my early retirement blueprint using the link in the description of this video. Getting back to the stock I'll tell you about today though, perhaps best of all, it looks undervalued right now. Price is what you pay, but value is what you get. Why is that important? Because buying a dividend growth stock when it's undervalued should provide for a higher yield, greater long-term total return potential, and reduced risk. With this in mind, I want to share with you an opportunity I recently came across in shares of Comcast Corporation, which appear to be trading at a significant discount today. Comcast Corporation, stock ticker CMCSA, is a media and entertainment conglomerate with interests in cable, broadcasting, film, streaming, live entertainment, and theme parks. Founded in 1963, Comcast is now a $177 billion by market cap media juggernaut that employs nearly 190,000 people. The company reports operations across five segments, cable communications, 53% of fiscal year 2021 revenue, media, 19%, Sky, 16%, Studios, 8%, and Theme Parks, 4%. Cable Communications consists of the operations of Comcast Cable. Comcast Cable provides 17.5 million cable video connections, 30 million high-speed internet connections, and 9 million voice services. Media consists of NBC Universal's television and streaming platforms. This includes a variety of cable networks, the NBC Broadcast Network, the Telemundo Broadcast Network, certain television stations, and Peacock. Sky consists of the operations of Sky. Sky is a leading European entertainment company that provides video, broadband, voice, and wireless phone services. It's also a major content producer via the Sky News Broadcast Network and Sky Sports Networks. Studio consists of NBC Universal's film and television studio production and distribution operations. Universal Pictures is one of the five major U.S. film production studios. Theme parks consist of the worldwide Universal theme parks. Comcast also has other business interests that consist primarily of the operations of Comcast Spectacor, which owns the film. Philadelphia Flyers and the Wells Fargo Center Arena in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Comcast is an interesting case study in perception versus reality. The perception is that it's a dying business. The narrative is that people are cord cutting in droves, dropping cable TV bundles in favor of streaming options. While cable TV specifically is in a state of slow decline, the reality of the situation is that Comcast as a whole is actually a growing business. Comcast is more than offsetting the decrease in video connections through an an increase in other connections. Indeed, fiscal year 2021 saw 1.1 million net additions to total customer relationships across cable communications, largely thanks to strength and broadband. And that's the crux of the matter here. Reliable, high-speed access to the internet is more important than ever, especially with people starting to work from home in larger numbers than before the pandemic. Well, Comcast is the largest provider of broadband connectivity in the United States. Since streaming television requires high-speed internet access, Comcast retains a lot of that consumer spending. There is simply a shift in the spending. Also, Comcast is becoming a force of their own in streaming. The company launched Peacock in 2020, 
This is their streaming platform. It already has 24.5 million monthly active accounts in the US alone at the end of fiscal year 2021. Less than two years in, Comcast is a major player in the disruptive technology affecting their traditional cable television business. Comcast is disrupting itself. Furthermore, Comcast is much, much more than its cable operations. We're talking about a global media and entertainment behemoth here. This is why Comcast posts up great numbers year in and year out. And it's why they should continue grow, growing their revenue, profit, and dividend for many years more. Already, Comcast has increased its dividend for 15 consecutive years. They're off to a great start with a 10-year dividend growth rate of 16.3%. Now, there has been some recent deceleration in dividend growth, but it seems like we're settling into a high single-digit range. The most recent dividend increase, for example, was 8%. I think that's plenty of growth when you're looking at a starting yield of 2.8% on the stock. This market beating yield, by the way, is 60 basis points higher than its own five-year average. With the payout ratio sitting at a low 34.8%, the dividend has a healthy cushion. I like dividend growth stocks in what I call the sweet spot, a yield of between 2.5% and 3.5% paired with high single digit or better dividend growth. We're clearly in the sweet spot here. Looking at business growth, Comcast advanced its revenue from $62.6 billion in fiscal year 2012 to $116.4 billion in fiscal year 2021. That's a compound annual growth rate of 7.1%. Meanwhile, earnings per share grew from $1.14 to $3.04 over this period, which is a compound annual growth rate of 11.5% strong top line and bottom line growth here. A approximate 14% reduction in the outstanding share count over the last decade helped to propel much of this excess bottom line growth. Again, there's nothing dying about this business. Looking forward, CFRA believes that Comcast will compound its earnings per share at an annual rate of 12% over the next three years. This would be right in line with what Comcast has already done over the last decade. In essence, CFRA is assuming a continuation of the status quo. I don't see any convincing reasons why one wouldn't assume a continuation of the status quo. I see two germane issues at play here. First, CFRA points to, and I quote, favorable mixed shifts to high margin connectivity businesses, as well as growth in high speed data and business services, unquote. Second, CFRA is looking at, and I quote, a firming recovery path for NBCU's advertising, TV film content, and theme parks businesses benefiting from pent up demand. Meanwhile, with the cable broadband business recently riding some demand tailwinds, the company has increasingly pivoted to a broadband led connectivity strategy and gained significant traction in its nascent wireless offering, unquote. Quote, losses on the video side of the business are more than being made up for in higher margin offerings on the broadband side of the business. Simultaneously, pent up demand for entertainment should boost the overall business. It's very well possible, if not likely, that Comcast is a better business coming out of the pandemic than it was going into it. And so to assume that the business will grow at a slower rate than it was before would be silly in my view. Using CFRA's near-term earnings per share growth forecast as our base case, Comcast could easily continue to increase its dividend at a high single-digit rate for the foreseeable future. Pairing that with a near 3% yield paints a nice picture in terms of the combination of yield and growth. Moving over to the balance sheet, the company has an okay financial position. The long-term debt to equity ratio is 1.0, while the interest coverage ratio is over five. Don't get me wrong, Comcast is indebted, and I'd like to see the balance sheet improve. However, they're not in any kind of danger whatsoever. Profitability is robust over the last five years. The firm's average annual net margin of 14.7% and annual return on equity of 19.9%. It's strange to see such a disconnect between perception and reality. Despite the narrative around cable TV and a dying business model, Comcast just keep putting up excellent numbers. And the business is defended by durable competitive advantages that include large economies of scale, high barriers to entry, and the ability to operate as a local monopoly in many markets. Of course, there are risks to consider. Regulation, litigation, and competition are omnipresent risks in every industry. Regulation is a rising issue in the industry, but Comcast benefits from limited or even no competition across local markets. While the cord cutting phenomenon is overblown when looking at the totality of operations, cable video disconnections negative and disproportionately affect the company in two ways. This hurts both the distribution through the cable video side of the business and the production through cable networks side of the business. Less consumers watching traditional cable television networks is a double whammy for Comcast. Comcast also faces technological obsolescence risk if better and or cheaper internet access such as 5G wireless can be scaled by a competitor. This would almost certainly reduce demand for broadband connectivity. I see the balance sheet as a risk. The indebtedness limits their future flexibility. Finally, theme parks have been temporarily impacted by the pandemic, but we are starting to move past this issue. I think one should thoughtfully consider these risks, but the valuation appears to be pricing much of it in already. 
With the stock down nearly 40% from its 52 week high, the stock looks severely undervalued. The price to earnings ratio is 12.7. To be fair, the stock never really commands a high earnings multiple, but this is still well off of its own five year average PE ratio of 15.8. Also, the price to cash flow ratio of 6.4 isn't even close to its own five year average of 8.2. And the yield, as noted earlier, is significantly higher than its own five year average. I valued shares using a dividend discount model analysis. I factored in a 10% discount rate and a long-term dividend growth rate of 8%. That dividend growth rate is as high as I'll go, and I am somewhat surprised that Comcast seems to deserve it, but the numbers pan out. This is a dividend growth rate I've repeatedly used for Comcast, and for good reason. After all, this is a company that has produced double-digit dividend growth for years, supported by double-digit EPS growth over that time. Even during a challenging time, the company still came through earlier this year with an 8% dividend increase, right in line with my model. With a low payout ratio and the expectation that the company will continue to grow the bottom line at a double digit rate for the foreseeable future, I fail to see how or why Comcast would be unable to deliver high single digit dividend growth. I usually do like to err on the side of caution, but I believe this is already a cautious take on the long-term growth trajectory. The dividend discount model analysis gives me a fair value of $58.32. The reason I use the dividend discount model analysis is because a business is ultimately equal to the sum of all the future cash flow it can provide. The dividend discount model analysis is a tailored version of the discounted cash flow model analysis as it simply substitutes dividends and dividend growth for cash flow and growth. It then discounts those future dividends back to the present day to account for the time value of money since a dollar tomorrow is not worth the same amount as a dollar today. I find it to be a fairly accurate way to value dividend growth stocks. Morningstar rates Comcast as a five-star stock with a fair value estimate of $60. CFRA rates Comcast as a four-star buy with a 12-month target price of $55. I came out roughly in the middle here, but we're all in the same neighborhood Averaging the three numbers out gives us a final valuation of $57.77, which would indicate the stock is possibly 47% undervalued. Here's the bottom line, guys. Comcast Corporation is running a world-class media and entertainment conglomerate. Perception around part of the business model might be putting downward pressure on the stock, but the reality of the situation is that the business just keeps putting up excellent numbers. With a market-beating yield, a double-digit long-term dividend growth rate, a low payout ratio, 15 consecutive years of dividend increases, and the the potential that shares are 47% undervalued, long-term dividend growth investors ought to be looking very closely at this stock right now. And now for a special news announcement. Air Products and Chemicals Inc. stock ticker APD just announced a JV development agreement that will see the building out of a green hydrogen import terminal in Rotterdam by 2026. This high quality dividend aristocrat just keeps lining up the massive projects. We highlighted this business back a few months ago, noting the incredible long-term opportunity that could be present in the shares. Don't forget about this great business. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Give us a like if you did, and let us know in the comments what you think about this stock. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on new content. Also take a look at the description box below for some important links, including the link to my personal stock portfolio. This six-figure portfolio, which I call the Fire Fund, generates enough passive dividend income for me to live off of. It allowed me to retire in my early 30s. I made my portfolio entirely accessible over at Patreon, and I also post alerts there whenever I buy or sell a stock. I put my money where my mouth is, and I'm often invested in the same high quality dividend growth stocks that I make videos on. Over the years, I've heard from thousands of investors who've been profiting from many of the same exact stocks that I own. So if you think this is something that you could benefit from as well, check the link in the description to see my portfolio and start getting my buy and sell alerts. I'll see you next time. <laughs>